As a family we join hands together Lifting praises to the Father above For sending His Son
Happy birthday, Anne-Marie. May you enjoy your special day. We love you and God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Marie. Happy birthday, I love you. First Sabbath of 2021. Wow! Let me be the first one to greet and welcome you to our virtual worship service for this brand new year. The Lord is good always. We're worshiping today even in this platform because the Lord's kindness never fails. If He had not been merciful, we would have been destroyed. The Lord can always be trusted to show mercy its morning. As you may have noticed, we started our worship gathering with a special feature for the birthday and anniversary celebrants in our church family for this coming week. When you can, greet them and most especially pray for them. If someone contact you for this purpose, please respond as soon as you can. I need to bring up one more time some announcements I made last Sabbath. The first one is the 10 days of prayer, which begins on January 6 at 7.15 p.m. as posted in our Church Life FB page. We're joining the entire world on this prayer marathon seeking revival for us individually, for our own family and church family for our community and for the whole world. The small group coordinators for each day is also posted in church life. For group leaders, if you haven't gotten the material we sent you, please contact us, pastoral staff, at your earliest convenient time. Then, on January 9, 2021, at 3 to 5.30 p.m., church officers and ministry leaders will be attending the annual Equip to Serve coordinated by our conference. This virtual gathering of like-minded local church leaders and their pastors is calculated to encourage or sharpen each ministry tool to be more effective in serving our church family, local community, and beyond. The registration process is posted in our church life FB page also. Please let us know if you have any issue registering or attending this church officer's virtual convention. This afternoon, we'll conduct a virtual communion service at 3 p.m. for those who weren't able to attend our drive-by service last Sabbath. Check the access code posted in Church Life and make sure you are logged in at least 5 to 10 minutes before the start. We'll play appropriate music to prepare everyone for this important spiritual experience. Also make sure that your participation to partake of the emblems later is preceded by foot washing in your household. Let us now focus our attention to the entire worship program to receive the bountiful blessing God has prepared for each one of us 
through the different parts of our worship service. For a call to worship, I would like to invite everyone to please open your Bibles to Psalm 116, 116 verses 1 through 4. I will be reading in the New International Version. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the dead came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, help me. May the Lord God bless the reading of his word. Jesus, oh Jesus. 
Welcome to the first Sabbath of 2021. We welcome you to our praise time today. And along with me, I have Amber and Maida. We have Lou on the guitar and Bea Luwanag on the piano. This next song we are about to sing, and you are going to sing with us, is a very familiar song called In Moments Like These. It's a very um, dated song. Um, Referring to today's world, in moments like these, I sing out a song to Jesus. And this version has a Tagalog stanza to it, so I hope you like it and I hope you sing it along with us.
Gail Jones Murphy called Sabbath Rest, Holy Rest. Come to be blessed on 
On the island of Puerto Rico, a teacher gave Kermit and the rest of his class an interesting homework assignment. The teacher asked the students to find someone in need and then help that person with something meaningful. Kermit smiled and thought this was an easy task. He already enjoyed helping people, so all he needed then was someone to help. Some of the classmates got together after school and decided if they teamed up, they could help even more people. Perhaps they could feed all of the homeless people in their town. So one student volunteered to bring rice and beans, and another student to bring a side dish, and others said they would bring salad and juice. When the feeding day came, all the arrangements were ready. The students met in the town square, where many homeless people often sat all day and slept on the benches. The students set up a nice table and placed bowls of rice, beans, and other dishes on the table. One of the students brought 150 paper plates to serve the food. But quickly, Kermit and his friends noticed that they had way more plates than food. All the food they brought might only fill 50 paper plates. After all this effort, this wasn't going to be enough. As they searched for a solution, someone suggested that they pray for God to bless the meal and help them feed everyone who was hungry. So they prayed and asked God to bless the food and the people who were going to eat it. When they said amen, the homeless people started lining up. While several friends spooned large portions of food onto paper plates, Kermit walked around the town square, looking for people to invite to the meal. Soon, Kermit had invited everyone he could find. He came back to see if there was any food left. Surprisingly, the food was all gone, and so were all the paper plates. Not a single item was left. Even though they only had enough food for 50 people, they had given out 150 generous plates. Kermit and his friends saw a miracle that day. God had blessed and multiplied the food. The students were very happy and they spoke excitedly about what had happened. They remembered the miracle of the five loaves and two fish when Jesus prayed over the boy's small lunch and then used it to feed the 5,000. Some students believe that Jesus performed the same miracle for them that day, and they never forgot this incredible gift from heaven. Today, Kermit, who is now the pastor of four churches, gratefully remembers his homework assignment to help others. This shaped his life and motivated him to continue helping those in need. The members Kermit pastors feed rice and beans to 150 people every Sabbath, and his other church feeds a similar number on Thursdays. As these churches feed the hungry, the town's homeless people find more than food. They also encounter Jesus, the bread of life. Can you think of someone you can help? Share your ideas with your parents or Sabbath school teacher. God has a special plan for you. Happy Sabbath, Church, and Happy New Year. Our offering for today is dedicated to the local church budget. A visitor arrived at a church in the middle of winter. He noticed it was cold inside the sanctuary and everyone wore winter coats and scarves. The visitor found the head elder and asked, is your furnace broken? No, the furnace is fine. We just don't have enough money to pay the heating bill. Startled, the visitor asked, doesn't the local church budget handle these issues? The elder shook his head. The visitor requested permission to address the church. He asked the members, how many of you had heat in your homes today? Everyone raised their hands. He continued by saying, today we are in God's church. I believe that God deserves better than what we enjoy in our homes. I will visit again next Sabbath and will donate to the local church budget. How many will join me? Most of the congregation raised their hands and he read this passage. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 The following Sabbath, the visitor returned and led the members in giving to the local budget. The congregation continued to pay for heat throughout the entire winter as they brought their offerings for the church expenses. When we compare the costs in our own home to the needs of the church, we can see the importance of supporting the local church budget. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you and spend time with each other. 
I ask you to please bless this offering and put it to good use and help it to heat our church and keep us warm during the winter. I also ask you to please be with those that are struggling during this pandemic and please be with them and their families. Amen. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father God, as a church, we come to you this morning with thankfulness in our hearts for the beginning of a new year that has been granted to all of us. 2020 has been a year that has rattled our lives like no other. But dear Father, we are grateful for all the blessings and all the miracles that you have performed for us the past year. Dear Father, this year, we pray that as a church, may we come closer to you. May we always remember the good things that you have done for us, so that we will always be reliant on you, that we will always keep our eyes on you and trust you with even the minutest details of our lives. We, as a church this morning, dear Father, would like to bring two families in special prayer. We bring you the Marientes family, dear Father. They have lost Inai to this pandemic. We pray that um, you will comfort them and that you will give them hope and that you will bring them close to your heart that they may feel that you are near that whatever happened is the best for everyone involved we bring you Chester and his family, dear Father. Only you, in your all-knowing, loving, mighty power, knows what is best for him and his family. We do pray, dear Father, especially that you, you heal him. And so declare your mighty power, dear Father, like you have declared your mighty power through your miracles during the time of Israel. We would like to pray for our frontline workers, dear Father. Give them extra protection so that they will not succumb to this disease. We also pray for our vulnerable population, that you cover them with your wings so they won't experience getting sick with this disease. We pray, dear Father, for the families that have lost loved ones, 
Please comfort them. Help them to remember the good things that has happened in their lives. And that they will continue to trust you and continue to love you in spite of your Father. May we continue to trust you. May we continue to trust that all of these things going on around us are pointing to the time when you will come. Pointing to the time when there will be more trouble. That we have to rely more and more on you to get us through this world. But let us not forget, dear Father, that this we are just passing through. That our destination awaits up in heaven as long as we trust you and, and believe in you. And claim your promises, dear Father, as well as the promise of salvation given to us through the death of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, thank you for hearing us answering our prayers, as well as for forgiving us our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Our scripture reading passage today is found in Exodus 14, 13 to 14. I'll be reading from the International Children's Bible, and it reads, But Moses answered, Don't be afraid. Stand still and see the Lord save you today. You will never see these Egyptians again after today. You will only need to remain calm. The Lord will fight for you. Happy Sabbath and Happy New Year, everyone. Goodbye, 2020, and welcome, 2021, with a joyful hope that it will be a really much better year than last year. How I wish we were already at the church to celebrate the first Sabbath of the New Year, 2021, but unfortunately, we're still in lockdown. We hope that soon we'll be back to our church. We had been quarantined or locked down for a long time now. Let's pray that this is going to be over. Yes, the COVID-19 virus is real and it's a killer. It's 10 times potent than pneumonia and malaria. But there's hope on the horizon. Thousands had been already vaccinated. Our son Mervyn and daughter Gladdy who are both nurses, had been recently vaccinated. And I heard that some of our members who are in the medical front lines had been also vaccin vaccinated. Another good, good thing, there are those whom I know that had been hospitalized, who have had COVID, but they are now back home and they're working already. So there's hope. And COVID-19 could be prevented and infected individuals can be cured. Do you believe that? We just need to take all necessary precautions and we must know what to do and act right away. We should act fast when we feel some symptoms of COVID-19 virus. Stay home and please have a protocol followed in your household, which includes taking those medicines and I would add vitamins that boost your immune system and that you will fully adhere to the new start health principles, new start. When we feel something like COVID-19 symptoms, we stay home, have about 20 to 30 minutes steam inhalation, drink hot lemon or lemonade, no sugar, and eat more <laughs> fruits and vegetables. Having said those, let us put on the armor of righteousness, the armor of God to combat the evil forces that are attacking us left, left and right. Let us move forward, go forward, strong in the Lord, serving Him in season or out of season, because He is coming very soon. I can't overemphasize enough that we should be extra careful. We should also be cheerful, not fearful, because a merry heart do it good like a medicine. We see prophecy signs that are being fulfilled now in our days because we live in the verge of the last days. Jesus is coming very soon. Our scripture passage is found in Exodus 14. It was read a while ago, and it tells the story of a difficult journey in transition. Let us pray. Father in heaven, may you and Jesus Christ, your Son, be praised and honored today as we worship you. Dear Holy Spirit, please empower us and give us strength as we transition to this New Year's journey on to the heavenly kingdom. May you bless this worship together. In Jesus' name, amen. Chapter 14 of Exodus had been filmed and put into movie in different ways. Let's look at how this starts. So read 1 and 2 of Exodus 14. You will see that by this time, 
the Israelites have gone way beyond from the home and from where they were to this side of the sea. And they encamped there for the moment. And uh, over there, they see no visible escape. There's water in front of them and on their sides were dense wilderness. A few hours later, they hear rumbling sounds of chariots, horses with Pharaoh's horsemen, armed armies pursuing them. Terrified, people cried unto the Lord. They complained to Moses and said, why did you bring us here? Is it because there are no graves in Egypt for us? What would happen to us now? There are some events in life where we are brought to a tight and seemingly hopeless situation like this one in chapter 14 of Exodus. But thanks to Moses, his leadership, he boldly spoke to these terrified people and he declared this, verse 13. Do not be afraid, stand still. In other words, be calm, no worries now. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your, hold your peace. This is what he declared. He spoke this bold declaration and with st strong encouraging words to this desperate, fr frightened people who are in transition. And he did that because he knew the Lord. He knew God from the burning bush, from making excuses and from trying to refuse to accept the call from God to go to face the most powerful man in the world then, the Pharaoh of Egypt. Moses had a glimpse of God's power when his rod became a snake and the plagues that attacked Egypt left, went away in one word of God. Yes, he has talked and walked with God already in the past. He now know the compassion, patience, and power of God so that he can proclaim boldly what God can do when things get tough. Fear not, stand still, and he will fight for you. See the salvation of the Lord. And talking about reality of human weakness, Moses experienced being fearful himself. He feared facing his faults and sin, feared of being fail failure in leadership. He feared that God's people would not listen to him and that he would not be able to speak eloquently before the people. Yet through all this, God demonstrated his compassion his patience, forgiveness, and his power. That's why Moses had the audacity, the courage to tell people, fear not, stand still, see the salvation of the Lord. He will fight for you. And I ask myself, do I have such courage like Moses? And may I ask you too, have you had that kind of walk and talk with God to know God much better now than when you first believed? And now can you testify through experience that God is compassionate, patient, forgiving, loving, and powerful to fight for your battles and to deliver you out of trouble. Speaking of this ordeal, can you picture in your mind this dramatic scene right here? Here are the Israelites being pursued by the enemy. The enemy was in a striking distance already and following the Israelites in the same road they went through. They came closer and closer to them, and I'm sure they were more terrified. As I have mentioned, the people complained to Moses, so Moses encouraged them. But also Moses cried unto the Lord, and the only thing that he could do right here, right now, is to cry unto the Lord. Yes, a while ago, Moses stood before the people saying, Fear not, stand still, 
see the salvation of the Lord. And while waiting, he must be talking to the Lord in anguish. Lord, please do something. That's why the Lord said to Moses, verse 15, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Go where? Go forward. Verse 16, But lift your rod and stretch, stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. So he did and the sea was divided. In between was a wide dry ground in between two walls. That's where they walk on, going forward to the other side of the sea. The Egyptian army pursued them through, and, uh, but, but uh, uh, looking back, they're coming. But God, through the fire in the clouds, intervened set up a barrier between them so that the army would not see the Israelites. God even took out their chariots' wheels, making it hard for them to move forward, to pursue them. Finally, everyone has now crossed the Red Sea via gr uh, dry ground. The army was still pursuing. This is the work of the enemy. They don't stop. They continue to pursue wherever we go. That's the work of the enemy. So God called the attention of Moses to stop, look back. Exodus 14, 26, the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and the chariots and the horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at daybreak, the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward, toward it. The Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and the horsemen and the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. Moses and the people could have moved faster forward knowing that the host of the enemy was pursuing them. But God asked Moses to stop a moment, look back and strike the sea again with his rod for the sea to close, uh, uh, close again and the enemies would be drowned and be gone and then celebrate victory. I don't know what kind of difficulty and challenges you went through the last year, 2020. I have no idea how high or low the troubling water that you went through last year. I don't know how big or strong the enemies that have pursued and might still be pursuing you this new year. But the good news is you made it. You made it to this first Sabbath of the year. Praise the Lord. And wherever you are right now, give glory and honor to God. You made it. And at this juncture, it's important to acknowledge that you reached the shore of 2021, not by yourself, but with God. He fought for you. However, before you move forward, you need to raise your right hand with an imaginary rod to strike the water again, this time so that it will close and so that it will cause its natural power to destroy the enemy, whatever enemies that have pursued you. Yes, the Israelites trusted God and they made it. They were oppressed. They were enslaved in the land of Egypt. And then they were brought to seemingly impossible road. But then they were delivered. There was an article written by George Babono, and he shared about this interview with over 600 children who had gone through the worst possible situations imaginable. He found out that many of the children who went through the worst situations came out with the greatest 
emotional stability and sense of connectivity. From that, he concluded that events are not traumatic until we experience them as traumatic, meaning we can't conclude that a person who went through a traumatic experience carries with him or her the lingering traumas like PTSD. And he wasn't necessarily negating the post-traumatic stress of growing up in a broken home or going to war and coming back to a situation that is so foreign to the experience of the battle that you fought, that you cannot find your equilibrium. But what he was saying is much deeper than that. He said that to call something a traumatic event belies the fact. And so he coined the term PTE, not PTSD, which is a very real thing, no doubt. But his term was for the PTE, potentially traumatic event, which he argues is a more accurate way to look at the things that we go through in our lives. The theory is straightforward. Every frightening event or a very painful event, no matter how negative it might seem from the sidelines, has the potential to be traumatic and maybe not to the person experiencing it. I don't know if you agree with that or not, but he is making a distinction between what we went through and what we do with what we went through talking about the Israelites being slaves for over 400 years in Egypt, they sure were carrying with them much of the trauma from what they experienced in Egypt. But it may only be a PTE rather than PTSD. We look, we look at what we could do to overcome those traumas. We begin to think more and appreciate what is stated in Romans 8.28 as a positive thing. That's a wonderful thing. All things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. We want to thank you all, church family, for your love to the Lord and to this church. Your loving service is much appreciated. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your love to each other and to us, for sharing your portion of your meals with us, vegetables and bread and rice cake and other blessings, blessing before the pandemic and blessing during the pandemic. I say, praise the Lord, O my soul, in all that is within me. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I would not be negligent to mention the fact that we too went through and still going through to some pain, emotional, spiritual, due to what our church has gone through this last year. Besides, we don't have worship gathering here. We also have some deaths. People who have died from the Magpayo family, from the Valdez family, and also the previous pastor of this church died. And we were so touched by all of this. And you know, recently, just recently, the mother of Esther Marientes also died. You know, I still carry with me those pains but Moses has a message for us facing the new year. And we have to have that kind of confidence to fear not, stand still, see the salvation of the Lord. Yes, some of us might be still carrying some traumas and some suffering because of this pandemic. Brothers and sisters, this is time for us to put them in new perspective. I fully understand 
that some traumas take time to heal and some traumas can be quickly be healed and to get through. If this is the death of a loved one, it would take a longer time to go through the trauma of losing a loved one. When there's a breakup of a relationship, like a divorce, a separation, slavery, or oppression for so long, it would take time to overcome those traumas. We should be empathetic, kind, and available when help is needed for them. For those who experience trauma because of wrong decisions and misunderstanding and miscommunication, uh, backbiting and gossips and jealousy, those are to be dealt with, with a rod lightning strike like how Moses stretched forth his rod to strike the sea so that the enemy of the past will die or will be killed once and for all. We know that as the time of the end comes and as we get older and as we face trials and sickness and persecutions, some of us will die. There's no secret about it. The Bible is clear that God's people will suffer all of this before he comes. However, there are those whom he would heal and protect. They will live through during this persecution time. When Jesus was here on earth, he did many miracles of healing. He allowed his friend Lazarus to be sick and to die for a purpose, that is to glorify God. When Jesus healed this demoniac, as part of being thankful to God, Jesus said to this healed demoniac, tell others what God has done for you. In Mark 5, 19, Jesus said, go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And the entire story is found in Mark 5, 1 to 20. Read that story. And we are here today, not only to bring before the Lord our traumas, but our trophies of thanksgiving, our praises and rejoicing, because we are still alive and God has given us another year. Praise the Lord. Yes, we made it here today, not because of us, but because of God's grace and mercy, which are new every morning. God will not allow you and me to be tempt tempted beyond what we can bear, that with the temptation, he will provide a way of escape. This promise says he will provide a way of escape. It does not promise that he will let you pick the way of escape. It's not multiple choice. It's not a choose your own adventure escape route. So God's way of escape is not up for debate. When God calls you out, he leads you sometimes in strange ways. This is why they must have been so disappointed with Moses when he took them to this back country roads to camp out right in front of the Red Sea because, because it would have been shorter or a lot shorter had they took another route. Many times when God brings you from point A to point B, he takes you, takes you on, on a z zigzag because God knows what we can and what we can't go through. So he brings the Israelites out on a way of escape that to them must seem long, but God knows it's the best way for them. By this time, the Israelites are millions strong to go through something with others who were going through the same thing that each of them had gone through. Now together, we as a church are many in numbers. We have to come together. We have to go through this together. 
we all have to raise our rod to strike the water back, to drown and kill those things that might separate us or divide us from each other. We need to be together to be able to go through this year's new challenges. The following suggestion I propose to each one of you we need to do. Number one, we need to forgive each other. If I have hurt any one of you, please forgive me. Let's not hold or harbor any ill feelings towards anyone. Life is too short. We don't know the future holds. Number two, we need to love and support each other by praying for and with one another, calling each other, encouraging each other with the word of God. Number three, join Bible studies or Sabbath school studies. Be part of the prayer team, number four. Number five, meet your small group. Number six, don't neglect to join the worship service even if it is a Zoom. We don't have any reason not to join this. Number seven, let's share the good news with our neighbors, friends, family, and co-workers, either in person or not. Number eight, prepare for the coming of the Lord by having a personal devotion, worship, and dedication to God every day. Let me just quickly rehearse this as we conclude about our text. Because remember, there's water on the right side, on the left. Their enemies were there following them. And so they were there. No other place to escape but this road. But Moses encouraged them something that God would like us to hear this first Sabbath of the year. Oh, brothers and sisters, strike back, strike all those mistakes and shortcomings, those lack of faith, and move forward, go forward. Take that instrument in your hand to pave the way for a new journey, a new journey with God. God brought you here today because, because God cares for you, for us. He wants you to use what you went through to go through victoriously this new journey. And together with the Lord, together with one another, this year, 2021. Let's go forward. Move forward in faith. God is with us. Greetings and happy Sabbath from Norfolk, Virginia. On the first Sabbath of 2021, we'd like to thank you, Pastor, for your message of the importance of taking a courageous leap of faith when you've been backed into a corner. And we'd also like to thank our audio and visual technicians who make the service happen every week. And a special thanks to you for joining us each and every Saturday. This year has tested each and every one of us in every way imaginable. Some of us have lost jobs, lost loved ones, and had to restart our way of seeing things. 2021 is not obligated to be any better. If anything, this year was a reminder to us of what is truly important in our fleeting lifespan on Earth. So start advancing, because the world will not stop and we are on a race to reach the ends of the Earth where God needs us to bring His love to the forgotten castaways, both across the world and right next door. May God watch over us from above, carry us from beneath, push us from behind, lead us from the front, and be next to us so that we may lean on him. Happy Sabbath, Happy New Year, and stay safe, everyone.
we surrender to your Oh